Well, hello, tubers. I have one here today that you folks might not be aware of and might be of interest to you. So, let's get that ball rolling. Now, they do have NOS, new old stock, on eBay for your three wheelers. They have uh, speedometers, they're getting almost $600 for just a speedometer, and you still got to have your cable and your drive that goes down on your wheel. That's another $500 for your NOS, you won't stock. So what I came up with here is something that's really affordable. I want to save you folks some money. Now, if you ever wanted a speedometer on your ATV, whatever it might be, motorcycle, whatever, here's what you could purchase to make that possible. Now on the right here, we have a speedometer. You can set whatever color you want for a backlit. Uh, eight different colors they have for that. The tachometer unfortunately only has the red. But I found some really nifty brackets to mount them. And I punched out the hole a little bit more right there where the bolt goes through so we could put a 5 16 bolt in there and mount it to the wires. But there's other ways to mount them up here too depending on what type of machine you have. Now they don't come with a hosing to enclose the back of these units so what I did was I spray painted the back, back of these semi-gloss black and loomed them up for the harnesses. And this right here is your sensor for your GPS speedometer. Uh, Basically, they have like an extra three-foot cable on there. You can mount it anywhere on your machine you want, but what I did is I tucked the extra up behind the headlight and uh, drilled out the hole a little bit for this sensor so I could run a, oh, what the heck was that, number eight screw into the housing, and then it just holds it up here, which works very well. The tachometer has an adjustment. There's buttons on the back of these. There's a button you can adjust the RPM so you get it correct for your machine. Here's your wiring diagram for the tachometer. Now here's your wiring diagram for the speedometer. That couldn't be any simpler. Okay, the speedometer caught GPS signal now where it stopped blinking on the trip part. Uh, that's where it's learning. And uh, the bottom figure, that's how many miles you have on the machine, it's not resettable. And for the trip odometer, it can be set two different ways, where it keeps going every time you start the machine, or every time you turn the key off, it'll reset, and then you have a reading for that one. Now for your tachometer, you go down under, you find the coil, and on this particular machine, you have a wire, which is a black with a yellow trace. That's your pulser for that tachometer reference. Now, to mount it, these brackets were available on Amazon. I'll leave you a link. And by the way, I am not uh, promoting or getting any monies back for this video here. Nothing too fancy for as far as moaning. I just punched a bigger hole. They had a slotted one there, and I punched it all bigger so I could use, I think, no, I'll take that back. I told 5 sixteenths before. I think it was quarter inch, so you'll forgive me, I hope. <laughs> anyway, oh, and then the tachometer has an hour meter on it, too, for how many hours the machine has been running. Now, the gauges here are the 3 and 3 eighths. Going down the road are really easy to see versus your two and eight gauges, which also they have on certain models. Well, okay, tubers, let's take this for a ride. I'll show you how they work. And also, at the end of the video, I'll include what I've been restoring lately here. So, just a little sneak peek coming up. video at all a cold start. You land, add some choke, here, open the gas tank a bit, and let's see. Yeah. Oh, you're not happy, are you? <laughs> you gotta turn the switch on. Oh, God. Okay, now we try. Ah, that's better. It says run right here. Ah, I guess we need that. I'll take the folks to the right. Yeah, I 
I think everybody loves them bloopers and them oopses. Anyway, we're ready now. Let's do this. I put a wire tie around the reverse, so if you want to hit reverse, you don't have to push that button down. It's kind of a pain. So all you got to do is pull the handle now, and you are in reverse. A little bit of thing I did there. Okay. And where this machine is a semi-automatic, uh, you don't go in neutral, go up the gear, and we really don't have to clutch it, so I'll, I'm able to take you for a ride with the regular camcorder, so here we go. A little hard to drive, hold on the camera, but we got this. Better get out of his way. He'll run me over. <laughs> ah. Boy, it's hard to drive off. Uh, drive with the one hand. There we go. No, I got you in my right hand. It's better. some wind noise on this one. We'll have to get over that. Watch if I give him the I bet he'll beep. What I tell ya? <laughs> Alright. Burr. <laughs> the critter. The tachometer, the way they worked it, it actually, they must have some capacitors in there. You turn the key off and it gradually dims down. And if you get one of these, that's normal. I did want you to know that. Fine too. Not some bad equipment there, boys. I like it. And girls. <laughs> What's a doggy doing? You want a biscuit? Wow, oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, anyway, that's your little tech tip today for the instrumentation on whatever you might be driving. And hope to get you folks back here again. Thank you so much, so much for stopping by. But wait, there's more! Well, tubers, I'd like to have you get into a survey here. I'm going to show you three videos, and you can decide which one you'd like to have me produce. The first one would be restoration of a 1982 Yamaha MX-80. The second one would be a DJ stand from the 70s, which I put together. And third one is the man cave out here, which everybody brought things for me to put this together, and we have a lot of fun out here. So you decide, and if you'd like to see them all, well, you can let me know that. Too. Thank you. Well, when you don't see me for a while, this here is one of my latest restorations. I don't know if you people dig this stuff or not, but anyway, it's a 1982 Yamaha 80. I put a charging coil or electric coil in the motor housing so I got power to to run the lights yeah here's the old DJ stand uh, but anyway dropped them off that's what started the ball rolling for putting this place together out here and then uh, one of my other friends says, if you want to pay for the materials, I'll build you a bar. So on his week vacation, he was over here every day and built me all of this. He's kind of a carpenter dude, which I was not at all at that time. So I wish to thank you all for stopping by, and I'd love to see it back here again. Thank you all. Bye-bye.